What's up, everyone? So I'm going to try to post a High Minds episode every Sunday. I'm posting this one either on Monday or Tuesday. But the reason why I'm going to try to schedule it on Sunday is because that's going to be the best day for me. So look forward to seeing episodes every Sunday. With this said, I will be doing a event in New York next Sunday. So it is going to be a very eventful week coming forward but there's a lot more to talk about throughout this episode so we're gonna spark a joint we're gonna talk about it before we actually talk about it we might as well um give a little bit more details on the event that i'm gonna be at just so in case you are in new york city you can pop out there come say what's up and also get to see some really really cool brands and just people at this event so let's talk about the event. The event is actually going to be ran by Package Buds. This is a person who makes packaging for New York brands. Definitely a pretty cool person. I've spoken with them a few times and I'm looking forward to actually meeting them. But it's hosted by, let me see what you're smoking. And um, this is a dope guy. This is someone who is doing a lot for the culture. And he's a New York person, so he's a New York guy through and, and throughout. But this is definitely someone who I can imagine will have a lot of a, a big helping hand in the push towards the quality coming back. So big respect to him. That is someone who I have already met and actually am aiming to do an interview with in the future so hopefully we can get that done other people who will be at this event are Gotti, proper doinks um foos flower many more real big players santa's hash a few big players we will have some mass holes in the building for sure if you are looking for some mass holes make sure you're there it's going to be a fun fun time for Anyone who's looking to actually um, level up. That's the name of the event is Level Up. So it is going to be a great networking opportunity. It's going to be a great spot to just go and enjoy your day. It's on a Sunday from 2 to 6. So why not? It's probably the best thing you could do with that chunk of time on a Sunday. You know what I mean? So definitely well worth going out there and checking it out. I'm going to be out there. I'm usually in Massachusetts, but I'm going to go out to New York for that day. And um, I feel like that's a great little segment speaking on that. With that said, I also have a few more topics to cover throughout this whole thing. So we are going to give you a little list so you know what you might not want to hear and what you will be looking forward to later on in the episode. But let's get to that. These next topics that I'm going to be speaking about for the next 20 minutes, I would say, are going to be the winners that just won the giveaway. I'm going to be talking about why I did a giveaway for my other YouTube channel. And I'm also going to be talking about who actually won because this was a cool opportunity for a lesson to be learned. One of the winners actually didn't claim the prize. So it ended up me being or ended up having to just be respawn, picked a new winner and in the end. Um, big respect to that person who did win and didn't claim it because they gave someone else an opportunity and also still support the page. So big respect. But um, some people just don't want prizes, I've noticed. Some people want to um, support without getting the earnings. And respect to those people. It's not, not always a common thing. But the other two topics that we're going to talk about in the next 20 minutes are Biden dropping out and now Kamala Harris being someone who is the front runner. So if you don't want to hear about that, skip a for skip forward a little bit. I will be covering some more topics towards the end. So the winners of the giveaway. This one was a great opportunity for everyone to see that you kind of have to actually really support the page if you want to be someone who wins. So where I actually hosted this giveaway or where I just posted the reels of the giveaway was on Instagram. I have an Instagram account that 
I use pretty frequently and it's connected to this YouTube page, I guess. The Instagram account is 420 documentaries. The reason why it's connected to this one is because I do documentaries on here sometimes. I'm definitely going to get back into that when I have more free time, but it's going to be a process. Um, I don't have anyone really at the top of my head right now for any of the documentaries that I want to do. I, I have a few people, Mike Perry being one of them, but <clears throat> after that performance the other night, it seems to me that the viewers on a Mike Perry documentary might be a little bit lower now, but that was definitely a cool giveaway to do because one person ended up winning a grow tent. One person ended up, I mean, the person that won the grow tent also got a pack of seeds. They got some grow supplies. They got other fun stuff within that prize. So the grow tent obviously is really dope to win if you're someone who has the space, but we also had someone else win that Pacific turn and they couldn't make room for it. So they'll be taken care of. They definitely um, will be taken care of, but it is definitely a prize that takes up a lot of space. And that's kind of the reason why I couldn't make do with it in the first place and actually make use of it. But um, in total, there was three winners. One of the winners didn't claim the prize. So that was what it was. It was definitely still really dope to do a giveaway like that. A few people ended up getting some mass holes and it was definitely really cool for the people who joined. There wasn't a single person that um, that won that seemed disappointed in the prizes that they're going to receive, even though in past giveaways I have had that. I've had people be a little bit um, pretentious maybe where they want some crazy thing for free, but hey, um, <laughs> I'm getting off track. Let's move into the Biden dropping out situation. Is this a surprise? Is this something that anyone should be surprised with? Not if you have a brain. Not if you have a brain and you actually use it wisely. If you have a brain and use it wisely, then you've been seeing that there has been a lot of hidden messages in the works of this happening. It seems like this has been something that everyone has been predicting for a little bit now. And a lot of people have actually been predicting in the past week or so that it would it was going to happen within the next week or so. So it just appears to me that this situation is very much not it's not going to unfold in a democratic way. I guess we can say it like that. But what do I mean by that? Why are they pulling the strings in the ways that they are pulling the strings? Is it all calculated? Is it all a move in an attempt to keep the people fooled? I think so. I think that it was something that they kind of had up their sleeve for a while. They've had that they've had that ace up their sleeve for a while where they've been prepping this moment and it doesn't make any logical sense that the attempt on Trump would be what a day or two before the RNC and then right after all of this doesn't play out in their favor that Biden is gotten rid of. It seems to me that if he didn't drop out, COVID would have knocked him out. And that's speculation, very much speculation, but this seems to be the best choice in his, in his way, I could say. I don't think this was definitely him stepping down or him just being like, oh, I can't do it. It was more or less people putting a mask over him and telling him no more, no more, buddy, you, you've done enough. And, um, that's not good. It's not democratic at all. That's not what we have been fed for the past. So ever long where they've been telling us, this has been the guy we have to believe in. And this is the guy who doesn't have dementia, but now sporadically developed dementia once they stop handing him softball questions. So it is definitely a situation that a lot of people are probably not going to want to hear a lot from me about this topic. If you do, let me know. I'm definitely down to start speaking more about these topics because 
as you can tell, a lot of these puppets aren't willing to actually speak on topics and they're leaving situations to unfold in very chaotic ways where I, I, I think truly we are in for some very rude awakenings. We're in some, for some very interesting chapters in our lives, especially if it unfolds where Kamala Harris is the next front runner or even potentially the next president that is going to cause a lot of chaos because let's start off here let's start off here if you're watching this page you probably are a fan of cannabis you're probably a fan of the way cannabis makes you feel and you're probably a fan of just what it's done for you in the growth of whatever you're trying to aim for. I know a lot of people are held back by cannabis because of its powers, but it's also pushing people forward because of its powers. It makes a lot of people very much self-aware with the things that they're doing wrong and also very self-aware with the things that they need to strengthen and just use as their focus. With that said, it's interesting when we see someone like Kamala Harris get asked, have you ever smoked cannabis? And she just giggles. She puts on a fake little giggle like, ha 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 ha, yeah. It's like, what are we doing? What is this act? What are we doing? Why are we fooling each other? Why are we playing as if this is some childlike thing? Like, oh, of course I believed in Santa Claus. When she was actually the one to hold people in prison or jail for extended periods of time due to cannabis. How are you going to giggle about it and then do that? It just is a very hypocritical point that I had to um, point out. I, When I say hypocritical, I truly mean if someone giggles about something that is now legalized and is now just like, oh yeah, well, I was, I mean, if they say that they were wrong before, I'll give them some credit. I'll give them some credit. I'll be like, okay, this person clearly was misguided. That can happen to any of us. Could happen to me, could happen to you, could it happen to this guy, to that guy, to your parents, to your mom, whatever, whoever. But if someone is misguided, the appropriate thing to do in a situation like that one would be to apologize through in and throughout so that you can assure anyone who is hearing this that has been affected by your mistake is going to now feel as if you have came to grips on what was the mistake. If you don't analyze that mistake and ever come to realize oh, this might not have been the right choice, then the people are always going to hold that as a sword against you. And they're always going to look at you as this faulty human. So, one thing that I have heard that makes a lot of sense to me is they don't want to see the Democrats, don't want to see someone like a Gavin Newsom get embarrassed in this tidal wave of Trump support. Everyone seems to be very much on the Trump bandwagon now if they weren't already. So what it appears is they don't seem to want to throw Gavin Newsom under that bus of of whatever. It doesn't they don't want to embarrass him. And it makes a lot of sense why they wouldn't. He seems like a very reasonable potential person that could be a president due to one thing the way he acts the way he puts on a show and it's amazing that we even consider this in our attempts of casting who's the right choice when we've seen what happens every single time we do that in the past if the person's a good actor probably very likely that they're not going to be a good president and a good ruler because that's what it is. President is someone who rules over the so-called free country, the, the country that you're able to go build your dreams. 
if we have some fucking shitty actor, someone that's not even going to be able to win a fucking award acting, like some of these fucking people literally just use their hands. They just put it on a show just trying to like mystify you. It's almost like some Charles Manson type shit that I'm starting to see with a lot of these different politicians. Like Nancy Pelosi for prime example is like, we use our brain. We use our brain very big very drastic and the second you, you you don't follow along is the second that you get fooled it's like this whole mystical fucking like um what is the word that i'm looking for it's some mystical um cult type shit cult like cult like charles manson cult type shit that we're seeing in the political parties nowadays these people know how to use their hands better than they know how to use their brains when they're speaking. And it's absolutely ridiculous. They do match up what they're saying very well with what the fuck they're using their hands to, to verbalize or increasingly make drastic or whatever the fuck you want to call it. But it's goofy. It's very goofy. And if someone like me can see through that... You're fucked, any politician. You're fucked. It just is what it is. So, um, Kamala Harris being harsh on drugs, being harsh on crime. Are we surprised? No. Um, one thing I also just want to point out before we move on from this topic is someone that shows their teeth a lot. I am someone who has terrible teeth. Terrible teeth. So, bear with me while I try to explain what I'm saying right now. She will, like, let all of her teeth be seen every single time she gets up to any podium or anything. Why does she do this? Why do animals do this? Let's get into it. In this video, we're going to hear this guy's reasoning on why some animals show it as a sign of aggression. Some humans will show it as a sign of flirtation, almost. It seems to be... Something that can very much paint a picture for people and help people judge the book by its cover if it is used in an effective way. So let's get into it. Straight or white, resulting in a perfect smile. Furthermore, when taking a picture, we are persuaded to say cheese. Could it be any more perfect that in the top right corner we have Mama La Harris, the fucking crisis actor herself? Let's get to it. Peace. And a presenter on camera will show their smiles often in almost forceful ways. But why is showing our teeth so important to many of us? And why is it seen as such a positive and warming facial expression? Well, this question is not trivial, since many other animal species show their teeth to indicate an aggressive, violent or threatening intent. For example, Dogs and cats show their teeth as a warning sign. And it makes sense too, because by showing your teeth, you're basically saying, look, here is what I can use to bite you, so move along. Now, what happened in our evolution that made showing our teeth a positive sign? When looking at our evolutionary... So is it a positive sign in all animals no very much no very very much no and we see that with dogs and cats the way that they sometimes will hiss at you and show their teeth in a attempt to intimidate you it is definitely something that i appear to see more of an intimidation level in in it still with humans i think that it appears to be an intimidation thing because if the person has perfectly straight white teeth then it makes them almost stand in this high position this this position of power where they look and are i mean it, they look the position that's really important in today's time as i've said probably too much throughout this is that people are very much actors in the politics now they are trying to find any which way to manipulate you any which way to make you think this way when it's actually that way. And by having the glitz and glamour and having that 
full smile that Kamala Harris has, I mean, it, it isn't a bad thing whatsoever. It's it's definitely a powerful thing for her due to the factor of it just making her fit in with anyone who thinks that they're snotty and better than the others. And um, sometimes you don't have to have the intelligence to think that. You kind of just have to know people. It's In today's culture, it's not what you know, it's who you know. So it is um, interesting when we see her approach the stand with such confidence. She has confidence through the roof. Confidence through the roof. And um, maybe it's delusion as well. But um, she will approach with just this grin of pure evil. It appears to be just pure evil within that head. And um, I guess that's a foolish thing for me to say because how am I gonna ever assume what's going on in her brain besides the points of her smiling at things that aren't supposed to be smiled about or laughing at things that aren't supposed to be laughed about such as cannabis use if she is someone who is very much against cannabis use if she's against people rolling up weed and smoking some weed then why is she giggling about it and making it seem like, oh, maybe I have smoked it? It's like, what are we doing here? Why are we playing each other? Why are we acting like actors in this scenario? It doesn't make any sense to act in this scenario. There is great politicians who would be very willing to die on the sword of saying that they aren't a get or they aren't for cannabis. And I'm not happy with that decision but i would much prefer someone to be truthful with me than to try to spit in my face and lie to me and just grin with this weird evil like hyena look where you're just looking like you're ready to shred me to pieces with all of this hidden stuff that's within your brain that you're not allowing out people like that never fully say what's on their what's in their brain and they're always saying these little short things they're saying these little short sentences just so they can keep the people at an arm's length keep them at a distance where it's never fully exposing your hand you know what i'm saying and um i'm probably harping on this a little bit too much when i see animals showing their teeth and like grinning like making it look evil looking at making it look scary and then when we see kamala harris doing it I don't think there's any difference there at all. I think that that is an intimidation tactic. It is also a tactic that some people might not be using for intimidation, but they might be using it just as a tactic similar to a dog trying to scare you off. It is a tactic in order to get some sort of reaction out of you. And whether that reaction is the sense of making you feel as if they are better than you it's up to you, I guess, but it is definitely something that I would say is clearly a sign of weakness, in in my opinion. It's a sign of weakness when we see someone get up and demolish Kamala Harris like uh, Tulsi Gabbard did. Tulsi Gabbard got up there and just demolished her, and let's play that real quick. So before we even play this, shout out to the Black Conservative uh, 2429. It's funny that people are even making names like that now, but it makes a lot of sense due to the factor of the Democratic Party was just so used to taking advantage of black people for so long in attempt to just use them as slaves in a way. So it's dope to see people are actually taking a step into the libertarian route or even the Republican route. I'm not a... Republican myself. I'm more of a libertarian, but um Shout out to this guy. This is this is honorable Hey, remember this I want to bring the conversation back to the broken criminal justice system That is disproportionately negatively impacting black and brown people all across this country today Now senator Harris says she's proud of her record as a prosecutor and that she'll be a prosecutor president But I'm deeply concerned about this record There are too many examples to cite but she put over 1,500 people in jail for marijuana violations and then laughed about it when she was asked if she ever smoked marijuana. She blocked evidence. 
She blocked oh evidence God. that would have freed that right an innocent. Is a suspicious fucking move. Whenever someone looks down and attempt to hide their reactions, that is a tactic. And that's why I feel as if it is just so fair to assume that the tactic of her using her teeth is a tactic. You know what I'm saying? So at the end of the day, a lot of people will disagree with me on that one. A lot of people will be like, oh, well, she is showing her teeth because she has pretty teeth. I feel like you're only criticizing that because you probably have gross, ugly teeth that whatever. And hey, I definitely didn't take care of my teeth when I was young. So, I wish I probably could show my teeth as much as she could, but there is also a huge a huge example when we look at animals to see that they use their teeth in an intimidation way, in a way to only make the person coming at them think a certain way. So, would I be a fool to think that her doing this consistently through every fucking chance she has is just a coincidence i think you would have to be a fool to think there is just so many coincidences happening in today's time even this one's gonna sound bad um i know a lot of people who probably watch my stuff probably are fans of trump but when i see the coincidence of him pointing over at a jumbo screen or him saying um you want to see something awful and then he gets shot in the ear me right away i think i'm like this can't be a coincidence there has to be some sort of something at play that we aren't told about in in full because if someone is going to have such a calculated moment a moment that is going to pierce his ear that's almost biblical all right but if the person also is in a speech right as they're saying oh do you want to see something awful and it happens it unfolds and the most awful thing that could have happened happens it's a coincidence that makes someone that's skeptical like me think and maybe there's no credibility to that thought maybe there's not it is going to make anyone like myself think, though. So it's just amazing that everyone thinks they can just pull the wool over the eyes and just it's all taken care of. Everyone, everyone, everyone's blind to it now. Put on a big smile. We're all good. We're all fine. No, nothing to see here. You know what I mean? It's just like a big fucking fool's game. So it's just like, um, maybe I'm the fool for even speaking about it, but let's move on. So before we change the topic too much, I just wanted to say it is also just a very interesting period of time because as we see, the shooter was someone who was much younger. He was supposedly like 20 years old. Um, it appears that younger people are taking the positions of the older people and almost are now taking more initiative than the older people to do stuff Kind of like that, even though that's not a great example of different things that they're doing. <laughs> One thing that's a good example is this topic that Tim Dillon was speaking on in his podcast. Supposedly, adults are outnumbering children with the with who's buying video games and just toys at the moment. Supposedly, adults are buying more toys than children in America right now. Does that make any sense to you? It makes a little bit of sense to me due to the demand of Pokemon cards and the demand of resellable things. But I just wanted to tie this in and throw this in at the end of that little segment right there. Because if that is true, if that stat is true that adults are outnumbering children with buying toys right now, it just makes everything else make so much more sense. We're in a time that adults are the children 
adults are the people who are the carefree hippies that don't give a shit about the future. They don't give a fuck about what happens to America as long as they're dead within that time, which seems to me as it's like a death cult. And I don't know, I could talk about this so much longer. This is definitely a topic that I just wanted to just throw in at the end of that one, because I think it is like um, amazing. If that's a true stat that adults are buying more toys, we're fucked. But um, how do I move on from here? Let's try. <laughs> so now we're done talking about politics and all of that shit. Um, one thing I wanted to speak on is this 94 Santa Cruz skunk that I'm smoking right now. This is from Big Eric. This is someone from Santa Cruz. And... Anyone familiar with skunk will know that it's definitely going to be a strain that has a lot of um, a lot of reasons why some people might not like it. Actually, to be honest, like skunk is one of those things that is more for the older school smoker, the person who likes to get high. Let's say it like that. It's not candy. It's not going to taste like candy, but smoking. And this Pacific one, I'm almost sure, <coughs> is skunk crossed with blue dream. Because that's supposedly what Santa Cruz skunk is. So this one right here is just so dope to get to drive. It's definitely getting me very high, to say it like that. But, um... Why don't we see stuff like this anymore? Why is skunk so hard to find in today's market? It's not a good grower. It's not one that people like to grow. Um, people want stuff that tastes very much like food right now. People definitely want stuff that tastes more like candy than food, but that could totally play into why adults are outnumbering the kids with the sales of toys. I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> maybe maybe all the toy cells are up because of all these toys that are getting thrown into the cereal boxes with the um with the fucking LCG eighth that they're buying. But um I think stuff like this is making a huge comeback. I'm not trying to say say names and like just throw names out there, but I even seen BZ Buds posted on his story saying um he's gonna try to bring can he's gonna try to bring other strains besides just candy back and he's gonna try to like do some runs of things that are just not candy and obviously he doesn't grow himself so when I say he's gonna be doing runs he's going to be sourcing stuff from people who are doing stuff which is dope if you have access to some really high level stuff it's better that you source that instead of growing some boof but um it's dope to see that even the, the the most candy headed people the ones that were saying that candy will never die candy will never die those people are now jumping off the candy wagon and they're doing it very drastically it's not like it's something that's just them coming to grips with oh this is now something that is um getting a little bit less demand these people seem to be diving off of the ship while they still have a chance to so um I respect to be easy for even taking that move it's probably not the easiest decision considering the fact that he's getting mega rich off candy and packaging but anyone could do that with uh well not anyone can do that if you have that creative level of 
coming up with ideas, using those ideas in a creative enough way where it's actually going to relate to the to the client, then you could do that with any type of strain, in my opinion. You could literally have some Bubba Kush that you could package up in some sort of weird... <clears throat> weird bag that has like some weird alien like that 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 movie paul where it's that weird alien that gets all dressed up and shit if you use that alien put it on a package have him now named as bubba and you're like bubba kush and the guy is just like standing on one of those kush mountains and it's just like a completely white it all white background with just like the just the hill and the alien standing right on top of it Put that on a fucking Myron jar. That thing's gonna sell. It's gonna sell. People. People that have creativity don't really have creativity as well. I've noticed that um, creativity more or less nowadays is just um, how well you're able to use other people's ideas in your own way. You know what I mean? It's like. I guess that's always been the case and it's something that I want to um I want to mention Joe Rogan used to he probably still always says this but he always will mention how he thinks that ideas are like these things that come from aliens that they're almost like this alien foreign object that somehow gets like put into our brain in some mystical way but it's like it sounds crazy, but it makes sense. It's like, how would how was the first Tesla ever made? How was any of these first creations ever made? Like this. Why did someone make that? Why was that ever made? I think someone made that light, obviously off a lot of trial and error, like a lot of failed attempts. And, um... <clears throat> Even just having that creative idea in your brain isn't um, something you should be shamed of or like be like, oh, someone could have already had this, so I should just hide it. But it is also something that I think we all have. It's something we all possess and smoking something like this is going to boost that creative edge 10x. It's just amazing. I think some, some things... Um, some things are only obtainable through experience and that's something that i even look at when we look at presidents who deserves to be this in this position of power who deserves to be the person that is in the position to teach i think truly the person that's in the position to teach is the person that has not only learnt the lesson but has maybe went through the struggle of learning it as well someone who's seen both sides of how it is able to be learned and that is something that i think is powerful is very much needed in a position of power such as a president someone needs to have that ego settled to a point where they're able to still use it to a strength as a strength, like, when I say use the ego as a strength, I mean, like, just have the confidence to not hold back, but also know when to hold back, you know what I'm saying? Because there is some moments where people do a little bit too much, say the wrong things, and put themselves in positions where it's just not good, you know what I mean? Like, Kamala Harris, Joe Biden, Donald Trump, any of these certain uh different people we can look at and see these things like trump probably perfect example he's someone who says a little bit too much sometimes and puts himself in puts himself in a position where he's gonna get judged and it's kind of justified why he gets judged so it's just like a um it's it's it's, it's truly a beautiful thing when you get to see that these people for example, people that are battle tested in martial arts like a Glover Teixeira, when he finally gets that belt wrapped around him after all of the struggles he's been through, whether it was 
not even being I'm almost sure he wasn't allowed to come to America for some portion of his career. He <clears throat> he's gone through a lot. So to to get the title at that age was just dope and it was something that a lot of people were like, "Oh, now anyone can do it at this certain age." But no. He went through a lot and put himself through a lot to get there. And um what I'm getting to when I'm when I'm saying this is I just think that um we're going back to a time where it isn't about who you know, it's more about what you know, I think. And um that is going to be very good for the people. At the end of the day, all that glitz and glamour, wearing flashy, weird shit, only makes you look good to a bottom feeder crowd. Someone who is not even the people who you should be trying to look good for. Those fucking people who are actually going to just be like, oh... Look at how shiny that, that watch is. Or look at it, whatever. Those people, if you're just trying to impress them, we get to this situation now where we're in, where everyone is just electing actors. And it's all just like a big propaganda scheme. It's all a big fucking scam. But um, I'm definitely going off track. I definitely... um. Thought it was just very needed to say that. I don't know why. I feel like right now, today, even in the cannabis field, we see a lot of people getting high rankings due to their abilities to network. And I think that's reasonable. I think that's very reasonable, but it's also just one piece of the puzzle. If you're only able to network, then... You're fucked if you're just throwing shit in the fan. Eventually, people are going to catch on to that process of you just tossing your shit into the fan. And people are going to be like, let's step aside and try someone else. Just is what it is. So, I think that's what we're seeing now with politics. And any brands that we see now moving forward or taking a new... A new direction credit to them but it's something we should be aware of i think that this is time to stay aware stay stay visual of all of these different um tactics that are being used to manipulate us or at least they're trying to um just manipulate i guess that's the, the only way you could say it but much love and respect to anyone that's watched this to the end. Definitely will try to stay consistent with doing at least one per week. And um, this one, very political, but sometimes it's needed. Much love.